So once again, hello and good evening, everyone, and welcome to the uh, informative webinar on um, postgraduate programs in education studies and teacher education at the Tata Institute of Social Sciences, uh, Mumbai and Hyderabad. Um, I'm joined uh, by many faculty members who are leading different uh, programs in uh, education. So welcome uh, all and welcome to all the candidates aspiring to join the program. Uh, this is the uh, main agenda. Basically, we want you to walk through about uh, all of these five uh, postgraduate programs uh, and then take your questions, basically. Okay. So, uh, Please feel free to put in any question you have in the chat box. And uh, I think about 15, uh, 20 minutes, we'll walk you through all uh, about all these programs and then take the questions. Yeah. Uh, we also, uh, we thought this webinar will be useful because now that you have taken PGC UET uh, with COQP 11, you have gotten many, many options. So, uh, Basically, it's a condition of spoiled by choices, right? So uh, we wanted to have you uh, uh, make an informed decision uh, by listening to faculty who are teaching in these programs and leading these programs since many years uh, so that you can make a better decision. We begin with the uh, uh, primary question of why study education at this, right? So uh, this is the main entrance of this, uh, which is in Chembur, Devnar in Mumbai. It's a very nice campus, uh, green, lush green uh, in Mumbai. So this is uh, known for uh, its 60 plus multidisciplinary postgraduate programs, uh, which are offered from four campuses, Mumbai being the main campus. We have off campuses in Hyderabad, Guwahati and Tuljapur. And this is known for its uh, academic rigor and the quality of research in the broad applied social science field. The faculty are drawn from multidisciplinary uh, uh, fields and they lead this uh, globally impactful research. And this is also very much known for its field action research and this allows us to also inform the field and the field informs the research and theory. So it's a very uh, nice blend of both field practice and theory components. And this is very much engaged with the national, international, as well as state level discourses and policy making and many, many international collaborations that uh, this is part of for both research and teaching. And this has a very, not only the campus is lush green, vibrant, but the campus life is also very vibrant for students. And this offers, I think, uh, uh, very good uh, and empathetic academic support and financial support uh, uh, for students. So when it comes to education studies, this has uh, uh, three uh, entities within the university system. This is just uh, for your information. Uh, we'll not go deeper into that. If you have any questions, you can come back. But these are the uh, structural things. There is a School of Education and Center of Excellence in Teacher Education, both in Mumbai, and there is a School of Educational Studies, Hyderabad. Uh, so all of these five programs are being offered. I mean, one or the other entity anchors uh, these programs. So these uh, five programs are, uh, the, this is the broad uh, categorization of uh, these programs. There are two programs which comes under teacher education, B.Ed, M.Ed, Integrated and M.Ed. We'll go deep uh, in detail. Each of the faculty lead will tell you, but this is just uh, FYI. Okay. So the last part I would like to highlight is the blended and flexible mode programs. Uh, which is MA in Education Elementary and MA in Education and Technology, which are primed for working professionals. 
Now, this in general is known uh, broadly in many fields in the social sciences, but in the field of education over the period of time, uh, this has emerged as a leader, not only in India, but also in the global south for its uh, research and teaching through various collaborations and various uh, impactful uh, projects and interventions. So we are literally present in almost every other state in India, uh, collaborating with uh, governments and non-governmental organizations as well, and also very prominently in the global south, as well as uh, collaborations in the global north uh, regions. Uh, in the field of education, we have been experimenting with new and innovative uh, research methodologies and many things. Uh, so we are known for being in the forefront of research and innovation. And uh, these efforts have been internationally recognized through various uh, awards and accolades. And as I was mentioning, we partnered with many, many organizations from the Ministry of Education to NGOs and INGOs and schools. So these are yet another set of collaborators uh, and partners whom we work with. So this gives you uh, an idea of the kind of and the breadth of uh, work and the partnerships we do. We don't claim to just do ourselves everything. We believe in partnerships with people and organizations. I think that's one of the uh, key feature of this. So with this, uh, uh, we'll get into more detailed discussion about each of the programs. Um, I would first invite uh, Dr. Gomati Japin to uh, talk about B.Ed. M.Ed. Integrated Program. Over to you, Gomati. Thank you, Sadakat. Um, good evening, everyone here. And uh, Sadakat has already set the context for all the programs. At the Center of Excellence in Teacher Education, that is CET. So CET as an independent entity in TIS has a lot to offer. So as you saw, the various programs. So I'll be talking about the B.Ed. M.Ed. program. So usually we see B.Ed. program for two years, uh, M.Ed. program for two years. But this is something, uh, an innovative program where you have a three-year integrated B.Ed. M.Ed. Uh, with again, uh, multiple entry exit options. So someone who wants to just do a B.Ed. and exit can exit at the end of the second year. Someone who wants to do M.Ed. and has already a B.Ed. can enter after one year and take the two-year MED. So this is the two-year B.Ed., two-year MED, as well as a three-year integrated B.Ed. MED. So this is the innovative feature of this program that CET offers. It's a full-time program at the Mumbai campus. So you see it's three years duration with 120 credits across three years, that is six semesters. The other important uh, component of the program, that is B.Ed., you also know that there is internships. So we have school internships. It's a year-long school internship. So throughout the third semester and the fourth semester, you go to schools for interning. And our university school partnership is very strong. We have a very strong partnerships with various schools. We have around 12 to 15 schools that we partner with, different kinds of, types of schools. We have uh, BMC schools, we have government schools, aided schools, low-fee private schools, uh, international schools, CBSC schools. So we have a wide variety of school contexts that you can engage with. And of course, each one engages with different schools and comes back and shares their experiences and get to know about the other schools too. So this is a very unique feature of the BADMED program. Other than this, when you talk of BADMED, you usually think about teachers or teacher educators but our program uh, provides the scope for a wide variety of career options beyond teacher teaching and teacher education. So we offer a bucket of uh, a wide bucket and wide range of uh, courses uh, catering to curriculum studies, educational development and policy, inclusive education, ICT and new media. So these are the various you know uh, categories of courses that we offer. So you can go into, you know, after your uh, completion of the three year, you can go into for curriculum or for policy or any sort of other 
uh, educational context. Uh, we and this program, not only this program in general, CET has a lot of uh, practical learning uh, opportunities, use of a lot of resources. So we have a uh, education resource center, also a BERC, there's a virtual education resource center, where uh, you have a, a lot of resources to explore, curate uh, under the guidance of various faculty. So we have a wide expertise of faculty also at center of excellence. And again, it's not limited to our own center. This ERC again opens up to uh, outside, you know, outside this also. Uh, we have a lot of collaborations as Sadak has also already pointed out, not only school internships, but interning for various other research projects and, you know, various other things. We have a lot of uh, many organizations that we collaborate with. Uh, community of practice is another approach that we believe very strongly in. So this is a learning community that we build, not only within the center, but outside the center as well as outside this. So you get to interact with uh, various other departments, various other students from other teacher education institutions. So this is around the year. We have a lot of uh, visits. So other faculty will talk more about it. And in terms of placement also, we have at least almost 80 to 85 percent students placed in not only schools, but various organizations. So the other faculty who is in charge of placement will throw more light on this placement feature. We also offer many professional competency courses. So these professional competency courses uh, builds your skills and competencies in uh, going out, you know, after career options to be equipped for the industry or for the schools or for any other organizations that you will be engaging with. So we offer a wide range of professional competency courses and we build teacher researchers. So a lot of opportunities uh, for working in research projects. Uh, across the center, we have many research groups, uh, six research groups, and um, these research groups conduct various uh, projects and uh, various other, you know, uh, activities. So you have a lot of opportunities to engage with different faculty for different areas where you are interested in. So maybe uh, the next slide, I think eligibility is something which I don't need to reiterate because that you're already aware of. That's why you are here after application. So maybe we can take questions later. If you have any doubts, we can move to the next program. Thanks. Thank you. Now, may I uh, invite uh, Dr. Neera Chandran to please uh, talk about MA in education, which is... Thank you, Sadakar, and good evening, everyone, and um, glad to see you all here. And um, Sadakar gave a wonderful introduction to the this as a learning community, as a research community, and as a very attractive um, destination for furthering your uh, educational, uh, higher educational aspirations. And uh, Gumuti has already set the uh, context for the kind of uh, immerse, immersive uh, educational experience that you will receive um, through the programs at uh, CET. So uh, building on what my colleagues have already spoken about, um, I want to draw your attention to the fact that uh, Emain Education is something, a, a program that is offered across two campuses. So it is the same program, uh, which will be offered uh, both in the Mumbai campus as well as from the uh, uh, Hyderabad campus. So we can take questions if you have any doubts in this regard later, but you, uh, I believe, will need to choose um, uh, where you would uh, uh, like to uh, do this program from. Um, so now going into the program, the nature of the program itself, as you can see on the slide, um, it is a, it's going to be a very immersive um, experience uh, for you. It is a full-time program. Um, can we go back, uh, Sadakan? Sorry. I'll just talk about the credits uh, and so on. So um, it is a, uh, it is, the program is based on uh, what we uh, call a liberal arts uh, framework. So which means that you will be introduced to the broader discourses, the practices, the critical understanding that you will develop on 
um, education as a sector. And uh, you will do this in a full-time mode across two years, which means four semesters, uh, acquiring a total of 80 credits. So all these uh, credits are not going to be acquired by simply sitting in the classroom. Of course, there is going to be that rigor. Um, and uh, we are the bad people who will keep asking you, have you done your readings? So there are quite a bit of uh, uh, readings and uh, theoretical emphasis that, uh, that this program comes with. But all the same, as uh, Gumti has already pointed out, there is going to be a, 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 a large um, element of uh, practical experiences and uh, uh, research-based uh, field experiences. Uh, moving on. Um, um, so uh, just to highlight the kind of pro uh, advanced specializations that you can acquire. So uh, this is going to be a, a very rigorous research-based uh, program. And uh, these advanced specializations are all, uh, actually going to be um, uh, nested within the research groups that we have at CET. And uh, your uh, orientation and your inclination to work in one particular sector, it could be ICT in education, it could be uh, curriculum and pedagogic studies, or it could be you would like to become a policy maker or work in um, uh, research, uh, policy research. So all of these can be nurtured through the way in which you structure your um, research uh, dissertation. And uh, Gumti has already spoken about competency and skill-based courses. This is uh, something that we are acutely aware of. I think my colleagues uh, will later on focus on this aspect. But we believe that you need to feel confident and prepared to face the world of work post your to your uh, uh, program. And we spend a lot of uh, effort and thought, uh, we put a lot of thought into uh, curating such courses, be it design thinking, be it uh, uh, program evaluation, and, and many such uh, uh, courses will be offered to you, which will help you to build your own professional competencies. And uh, uh, there is going to be a lot of exposure to not just within the PR community and the research community, within the very vibrant uh, this, uh, uh, Mumbai campus, but also uh, visiting scholars and uh, curated seminars and uh, workshops and, uh, and research uh, um, uh, symposia that will be conducted um, across the semester by the various research interest groups. Um, I, I don't think I will spend time on the career opportunities. You can see these, uh, these are going to be, uh, I think, talked about later on as well. Um, do I uh, need to focus on the entry eligibility? Um, Sadaka, what do you think? Uh, perhaps not, right? So maybe we can take questions if there are still some right. uh, unclarities. Thank you. Thank you, Meera. Now I invite uh, Dr. Anusha Ramanathan to talk about uh, MA in Education Elementary. Okay. Hi, yeah, thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, MA in Education Elementary is actually one of the first education programs that we've started in TIS in 2006. It comes under the School of Education in the Mumbai campus, and it is for two years, but it allows for working professionals to be part of it because it is a blended mode program. The other programs that you've heard of so far have been on campus. This is a blended uh, learning, where it means you will come to the institute for about three weeks or one, 10 days to three weeks in a semester, each semester, and then that's how the program runs. Um, this focuses on elementary education and uh, enhances your ab ability to understand how education is to be thought about, how cognition and learning develops in young children, and really is something that uh, is vibrant because practitioners come together. Not that we don't welcome uh, youngsters and newbies to also join the course. Uh, the next slide. Uh, the course credits, however, though it flashes on at 66, will perhaps change for the new year uh, students because the NEP will ensure that you're actually doing 40 and 40, 80 credits. So I just wanted to flag that element. Yeah, uh, you will be uh, largely working with a variety of courses and programs uh, that work in the dual mode structure. It is enabling you to think about issues 
and generally asks you to reflect on experiences and opportunities that you may have in your workspace, but also have encountered as students and be able to look at field attachments. So for instance, you go for, um, you are exploring options in terms of the field to be able to look at issues in, uh, uh, you know, out of school learning in mathematics or uh, looking at programs that evaluate in terms of English language speaking or how people study at home in terms of privileges and so on. So you have a variety and we have developed this course with a lot of other institutions. It's a very collaborative venture. And so you have exposure to those as well, sometimes even in the teaching, uh, such as Homi Baba Center for Science Education and others. And in terms of career opportunities, uh, well, actually the world is wide open to you all. You can choose and architect your own careers largely, but you do have elementary school professionals, curriculum development, especially in the elementary learning space, uh, teacher training, consultancies, research, and of course, school administration as well. More in the private sector, but yes, definitely you can look at school administration. Uh, and the eligibility criteria, uh, yeah, the eligibility criteria continues to be uh, undergraduate, yeah. Go on to the next one, yes. Thank you, Sada. Thank you, Anusha. Now, I request uh, Dr. Bindu Tirumalai to talk about MA in Education and Technology program. Uh, thank you, Sadhakar. Um, so the MA in Education and Technology is our newest program uh, in uh, this Mumbai and at the Center of Excellence in Teacher Education. It's in a flexible mode. Uh, again, this program is offered to working professionals and um, it's a one-year program and part-time option, uh, part options are also available. And really, it aims to build some uh, critical understanding, knowledge, and pedagogies uh, around uh, um, the area of education technology. Um, it, uh, it aims to develop um, um, expertise in or uh, skills and competencies in research, as well as practical uh, understanding. Uh, of uh, education technology, teaching and learning design, uh, pedagogies uh, that can be adopted uh, in education technology and it really aims to build professionals in this area. It is a unique program, like I said, it is a one-year full-time program. It's offered in a flexible mode um, uh, where it, you do come into the campus for uh, 50 days in a year. And it's, <clears throat> but it's also offered in a part-time mode where you can complete the course in two to five years. Um, it builds, um, so basically you have um, um, the main, um, I would say the main characteristics are uh, the specialization courses, but before that the foundational courses. Uh, uh, on around education, the specialization courses. Specialization courses could be uh, uh, teaching, research and policy, ed tech and uh, design, uh, learning. And uh, we have education technology core courses also. And to bring it all together, uh, students will be required to complete a capstone project, which will help uh, you bring all the pro, um, courses together um, to understand EdTech in a more critical way. So the program highlights is basically, uh, it's in a flexible mode. We have many industry leaders and practitioners engaging um, with, uh, with the students uh, and who are also faculty in the program. Um, so, and, and as well as national and international academicians and leaders in the field. Um, the capstone project I already mentioned is, is uh, basically it's a, a design-based research. And uh, so you pick a really real world project and uh, you work with the practitioners in the field of education uh, to come up with, uh, and you're also mentored by both the uh, 
faculty as well as a, a practitioner uh, in the field of education technology. Um, so you have um, the field sites could be higher education or a K-12, K-12 school education. You could be startup education companies um, um, or even state and central government agencies and other NGOs and organizations. Uh, again, I won't list uh, the careers, but you can see that it's uh, from curriculum designers to uh, ed tech leaders and entrepreneurs. Um, you, you could pick, um, it would help you uh, pursue any of these careers that are listed. Thank you, Salak. Uh, just wanted to add, Bindu, that uh, this MA in Education Technology program also has a seminar component wherein we bring in people from industry as well as the international academia and other collaborating organizations uh, to uh, engage into uh, dialogue uh, about the field, which is still in the nascent stages, you can say. So uh, now uh, I request Dr. Richa Sharma to uh, tell us about what kind of facilities and support uh, students will get at this. Thank you, Sada. Am I audible? Yes, please. Go ahead. So, uh, you know, uh, we are talking to you as a representative of CET, but also the larger community of this. And uh, but here, you know, we'll briefly take you through the uh, facilities and support that we at, a cent at our center provides. And, you know, it's a large community of students, practitioners together and experts uh, where, uh, um, you know, we do so many, pro you know, research projects. So we have this community which is which goes beyond the boundaries of this uh, Mumbai and CET. Uh, uh, we have very robust system for synchronous and asynchronous teaching and engagement. Uh, uh, we uh, most of our uh, you know uh, larger engagements pertaining to you know exposure to foreign faculties and things. You know we have a lot of hybrid sessions and we have all those infrastructure uh, available with us. Uh, we have wide range of online and offline resources, which includes labs, which includes toolkits and, you know, digital library. And this, be, this is beyond what this uh, offers. Like, you know, this is what we make available through the center itself. And uh, uh, both, uh, you know, through the structure, inbuilt structure of the courses, as well as, as you know, uh, you know, extra and co-curricular engagement, you will get to engage with a lot of hands-on workshops and, you know, other, uh, uh, you know, uh, capacity and competency building uh, endeavors. Uh, next slide, please. So, uh, you know, this is just, uh, a, a, I mean, this is like a tip of the iceberg. Uh, you know, we will keep you engaged in, you know, very creative and, you know, highly uh, academically enriched ways uh, uh, through things that happens uh, uh, at the campus and within CET. So you will see that, you know, we have series of talks, we would have symposium conferences, you know, online talks, we will have hands on workshops, one on one dialogue with faculties from, you know, uh, one of the best universities across the world will come and meet you. We invite them to our research engagements, our uh, various uh, projects. So you, this is some of the glimpse. So you'll you'll get to you'll have a very very good exposure to the latest discourses in the domain of education and beyond, which allows you to which gives you an edge over someone else who is also learning education somewhere else. Uh, next slide, please. So. Uh, Apart from the campus infrastructure, you will see that uh, at our center, we have invested uh, ourselves in building a resource center and design lab, and which has, uh, you know, uh, an interactive flat panel, which is like, you know, the latest uh, uh, resource 
uh, which uh, with which our learners engage and create their own resources as far as you know their pedagogic disciplines are concerned uh, we uh, uh, we have teacher preparation labs we uh, we take you through uh, you know three walks a lot of exposure visits to uh, innovative schools in and around mumbai and uh, uh, you know places like uh, uh, Digantar, Gandhi Ashram, Varda, wherever those have historical significance, those have, you know, contributed to the development of educational discourses and have uh, proved turning points. So you you get to visit those places. Uh, most importantly, within this space, you will get to meet. Uh, your peers from across the country through winter school, which we conduct every year uh, in, in the month of December or January. That depends on our academic calendar. But uh, more than 80 uh, teach, student teachers, they come and they stay on this campus where we invite a lot of experts from the uh, domain of education and beyond who engages with these fellows and these fellows then come you know then contribute to the, the larger community of student teachers across the country where you get to learn how things are happening in their campuses how you know which faculty can you know then it, it's a lot of you know it's faculty level engagement you know it moves to on different verticals from there we uh, the faculties uh, the faculty at the center uh, has been bringing out uh, textbooks of different uh, pedagogic uh, and uh, uh, different domains within education uh, research and uh, uh, discourse so we our english language and learning textbook is out social science is going to come out we have a textbook on uh, education technology and so you know and science education they're all so you will see that you your own uh, you'll be encouraged that you know people who are coming to teach you in the classroom uh, have to have something to offer you to read and then you can share those readings with your colleagues and so it goes beyond uh, just that uh, next slide please so this is all academic, like, you know, uh, so far, like, you know, research, this workshop, hands-on engagement, this and that. But a student life is always, uh, you know, it gets enriched when there is something at more aesthetic and, you know, at the level of a spirit. And so you will see that at the center, we have annual fest, which is called Cipher. We publish an annual magazine, which is called Riyaz. Uh, we do freshers and farewells with a lot of enthusiasm. We celebrate birthdays, you know, uh, you know, collectively do stars. We celebrate a lot of, you know, you know, there's a lot of spirit uh, with which we try to engage beyond just beyond the classroom and, you know, academics. And because we truly believe that uh, these engagements where you're, uh, where you're slightly uh, not worried about your grades, your evaluation, you tend to learn about people who join you from different culture, backgrounds, etc. on the campus. So that makes life truly enriching. So this is, you see that it's a 360 degree experience for you, uh, which, which is at different levels, which is at the level of cognition, at the level of aesthetics, at the level of epistemology. And I'm sure that uh, this presentation intrigues you to know more about us, to so do visit our website for more updates. Thank you. Thank you, Richa. So now uh, we are towards the end of the uh, presentation and we'll soon open up for the Q and A. But uh, there was a there is a question also. So this admissions portal is open, uh, which is appln.tis.edu. Uh, you have to register on that. Uh, it's basically a three step procedure. Register on that portal using your PGCUET application number. Upload the documents and choose. Uh, you can choose up to three PG programs. So this webinar should help you to make an informed decision. Ultimately, you have to choose, uh, you know, opt for any one program because you can't pursue multiple programs simultaneously. Uh, and then appear for the online personal interview. So it's a three-step process. 
and the last date to register is 24th May. Yeah. And these are the timelines. Uh, you should check the admissions.pis.edu website. Uh, this is there on the website. Okay. So the OPIs are scheduled between June 18th to 30th. Okay. So now we uh, open the uh, Q&A session. So floor is open to you. Uh, may I request all the faculty, uh, any of you want to respond to some of the questions which are already on the screen, then uh, please go ahead. I think we have been just no, to... There is a question. Sorry, I'm sure you want go to... Go ahead, Meera. No, no, please ahead. go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I just wanted to respond to a question on uh, sociology of education and uh, somebody wants to know uh, what it is. So I just want to mention that education is a multidisciplinary domain. And it draws from other social sciences and humanities and uh, uh, courses of, sorry, disciplines like um, history, uh, sociology, uh, philosophy, uh, economics, um, uh, psychology. So these are all the different social sciences and humanities disciplines that um, education draws upon to look at the same issues from a social, uh, from a, a education perspective. So um, sociology of education is one of the many uh, compulsory courses that you will uh, be doing of this nature. So you will also have a compulsory course on psychology of education, history of education, philosophy of education, and uh, so on and so forth. I hope that answers your question. Uh, there was another question which was for some reason directed to me directly, uh, which talks about uh, can if I have not given the PGCUET uh, COP, COQP 11, am I still eligible for application? And the answer is actually no. Uh, you are uh, right now not eligible. Uh, there may be spot admissions as applicant, which may be opened up if we don't fill all the seats. And at that time, there may be an expansion of the number of papers that are allowed. And at that time, you could apply. But otherwise, the eligibility criteria for you to apply for now is QP11. Yeah. Yeah. So regarding the fee structure uh, for hostel accommodation, so uh, the, this institute does not offer any hostel accommodation for the BADMA students as such. And MA education, yeah, though it does um, offer for a few, depending on the uh, availability. Uh, this as a whole institution has many students, many schools and centers, and the number of students is abundant. And the campus facility is very less compared to the number of students enrolled. So, Host, uh, hostel uh, facility within the campus, it's a uh, complete, you know, bleak. Uh, the, uh, the, the chances of getting hostel is quite bleak. But again, uh, depending on the maybe case by case when um, the income, you know, the financial status and income you know, somewhere probably can't guarantee, can't promise, can't commit, but then yes. But CET uh, gives certain support uh, to get some accommodation within uh, the vicinity of the campus or a little bit far away. We do have, the office does have uh, a list of, you know, uh, brokers and to uh, contact and where you can actually go and, you know, uh, try to find for accommodation. So, yeah, and you can also uh, consult your seniors, basically your seniors who have been, uh, you know, getting accommodation within the vicinity and little far away, they do club together four and five or eight, depending on the number of rooms, uh, depending on how much they can pay and afford. So these kind of things you need to really check with the office. Uh, and of course, your seniors will be the most uh, helpful ones who will be actually guiding you through this process of hostel accommodation. And mess is of course available for all. Um, and one more thing I would like to add in terms of uh, CET offers a lot of student support, academic support. 
So if students are having certain kinds of issues with readings or language barriers, uh, we do have a kind of committee which uh, helps, you know, we, we have mentors, we have research associates, certain faculty who do um, reach out to help and support the students. So that is one additional feature that we do offer. We could. Yeah, Anusha, would you like to add something? No, I just put in the fact that different programs under TIS themselves have different fee structures and components. And so I would really recommend that you go to the website and check the fee components for the courses that you are, programs that you're very interested in, uh, and check out those fee structures because uh, otherwise we'll get into uh, things. The other point is uh, Arpita's question, Gomti, on CTET after doing B. Yes, mm -hmm. but... Uh, if you can just yeah yeah definitely most of our i think alumni have appeared for CTET and they have cleared the CTET uh, based on the learnings from the program itself so you can definitely uh, check with them they are the best people who will actually talk about it and guide you you have to appear for a CTET if you have to if you want to become a teacher or in especially in the government sector yeah yeah and, and most uh, of them yeah yeah, and Bindu is asking if Bindu Gupta is asking if I can change my branch after first semester, like engineering. No, <laughs> no. no, you can't. Sorry, no. if you can't be switching, uh, you get in, and that is where it comes in. Uh, Krishna, your question on MA education versus MA in education elementary. Uh, that's a good question, but the point is that it really depends on what you're focusing more on. MA in Education Elementary is exploring and encouraging you to really focus on the primary education level. So if you're doing mathematics education, you're doing language education, it's first language pedagogy. If you're looking at science, it's about students from first standard to fifth standard kind of looking at it. Bindu teachers, Bindu, Dr. Bindu Tirmale who was <laughs> explaining to you about MAET teachers, uh, some of these courses and perhaps can come in, but primarily that is the element. MA in education largely is more in terms of getting a macro view and it also a large part of it focuses on the middle and high school education and uh, focuses more in terms of teacher education from that angle. That's the primary crux difference that you will have. In terms of what is the significance regarding placements, I will say that because ME Education Elementary is largely the uh, people who are part of it are professionals, working professionals. Uh, it doesn't really have a very robust placement structure. You would have opportunities you, we, I mean, of course, you come to know of opportunities, etc., et but it is not a, a driven placement structure there, right? So, um, I mean, education, there is a placement structure in place because, again, they are youngsters and uh, largely many of them may be freshers. Bindu, you wanted to add something? Yeah, uh, so I just wanted to say that the MA in elementary education focuses on uh, elementary education, that is from, uh, you know, preschool to about eighth grade. And um, that is the focus. Um, but um, apart from that, it's that is the focus of the pedagogy courses. But apart from that, it really builds perspective. So um, it's a perspective building course. And uh, if you're thinking of working in the area of policy or research, or curriculum development in elementary education. Um, this uh, this is a good course, and like Anusha said, one significant difference is the mode of uh, delivery. While the MA education um, also builds perspective and does all these things, and is not focused only on elementary education. Um, it is a full time campus based program. Uh, Whereas the MA elementary education, you you can take it up as a practitioner because it's a more uh, um, blended and hybrid program where you come into the campus every semester for a contact period and uh, um, then you work um, online for the remaining part of the semester. Yeah, to respond to Ranjan, yes, all the centers, at least within the uh, CET is in one campus. Yes, which has already responded. 
Rich, I can respond to the placement uh, report of placement of the previous two batches, Richa, for B.A.M.A. Yeah, so uh, Richa, uh, you know, education domain itself is uh, multifaceted. So, uh, so are the placements and we have been able to get, uh, you know, complete spectrum of organizations and institution which offer, uh, um, you know, placements to our learners and uh, which ranges from uh, CSR, uh, you know, organizations to tech uh, startups to already established tech, uh, you know, at tech farms to schools, which are both residential day boarding or, you know, regular uh, through uh, CTET. Some of our students have got into KVs, etc. So those are long term placements, but we do conduct we do conduct a uh, placement mela and you know uh, at the center itself and uh, uh, the every ctc this year and you know from last year have constantly been uh, you know going uh, up it, it, it's increasing and it is quite good if you compare with the market of the uh, education sector so uh, which is around 7 lakh per annum, the average CTC that our students now getting, which is the batch of 42. And uh, our, the percentage of people who have direct, got directly placed through placement uh, procedures and, uh, you know, events at the center, uh, it's, it's, it's very large, it's about 80%. And then uh, rest of them, they, you know, they go through government channels like KVs and, you know, ITBT schools and other, and some of them go for other competitive exams. So our students have got through banking, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, we are pretty... Piyush has a question on PSUs, therefore, and uh, yeah. Yeah, so do PSUs... Public... Yes, they do. They do, but uh, we, of course, we they have their own, uh, you know, complete uh, procedures. So our students have got through, but uh, we've not been able, I mean, of course, we can't get them uh, to do placement uh, at the center. Like you would know that these are largely uh, non-profit organizations, CSRs and private entities, which we invite on the campus some of the schools also do not come but they actively take our students they tell us that we uh, they they share their uh, positions with us so we get uh, priority there so that's and that's for most i mean we have been able to establish some uh, credibility with residential schools and you know those are pretty good places for uh, you know fresh graduates to work at so that's also okay yeah, um, to respond to Tirna, yeah, it has been already covered in the Q&A, but still, again, I would like to reiterate that hostel facilities are not available for all students. It's a very rare, rare case. So you need to look for accommodation in and around or a little far away, wherever you feel you can afford and it's feasible for you. Uh, I would just like to add there that on this site also you will find that we have a list of uh, brokers who are uh, registered with us, who have been vetted, and uh, those are brokers who help you to identify houses. And uh, also during, uh, you know, the selection, you know, also clubbing people together and seeing if you can share spaces and houses in that sense. So that list is also available on our site. If there are any other questions, I think most of which has been yeah, answered. And if you want to also unmute and ask, uh, please feel free to. There was someone called Arpita who just said, ma'am. So, yeah. Arpita. I think she wrote thank you and ma'am, and in between, few other chats came. <laughs> so it was like, um, okay. There was one more. Uh, Mondra, you can unmute and ask if you like to. Pravalika has written uh, any query or just. Good evening, ma'am, is what she has written. Mm -hmm. uh, Srinivasan, when will the shortlisting process start? It is in progress. And uh, I think Sada had shown you a list of uh, the outline of when you will be receiving emails. Uh, and that is precisely when the shortlisting process will start. Uh, Sada, if you have uh, access to it and share. Yeah. 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 
So I think this is the timeline that you yeah. can always uh, get from the admissions.is.edu. The one and only so website. I think now you should bookmark. So by 10th June is when it will be announced for you all. Uh, uh, no, the Kavya, the online interview will be not for all who have registered, but it will be for those who are shortlisted. And this is on the site. What Sada is showing you is a screenshot of the site. And the online personal interview for those who had questions on that is primarily to ask more, uh, you know, about yourself, why you want to study in these courses in a particular program, if you have, um, and what is it about education and uh, feel that you know and the domain and structures that you know and what are your opinions and you may be asked maybe on a to speak extempore on a topic related to education uh, online education private education public education so on and so forth uh, and uh, for questions on you're not able to register for a new course uh, other than what you had already opted for in the PGCUET. Uh, we understand that uh, you can write in to us uh, at the addresses that are being shared and uh, we can you know, uh, get back to you with processes if there are any other, right? So you can look at that. Um, if you are a PWD student, and I do wish, uh, you know, is there any special scope for us regarding accommodation? Uh, accommodation has many connotations, Tirna, but we do have another PWD student in M, uh, MED who also has a hearing challenge. And uh, in the interview, I don't have, you know, I don't know if we have enabled uh, subtitles for you here. I hope you're able to hear us and see us, but even in the interview process and through the uh, academic process, we will uh, consider your difficulties and see how we can accommodate uh, some of these special uh, you know, needs that you may have. But if it is about the hostel facility, that no, uh, they won't, they, that will really depend as Kumti said on requirements, needs, and of course you can put in under the PWD there. And, but it will be seen. Yeah, regarding uh, the gap year, many of you have asked, there is not, no such criteria for gap year. That's okay, the gap. Secondly, someone has asked for finance loan facility. Uh, we do have financial aids. The center does provide financial aids for students. But again, we review the, the com there is a committee which reviews the uh, financial aid applications and uh, only who are eligible get it, not everyone. Yes, but we do have it, subsidies and those kind of things. We we are a very student-friendly center. Uh, subsidy, uh, subsidies are, as per the government regulations, uh, loans and financial aid is dependent on how much is available and then it is... Yeah, it's completely based on... Gets. Yeah, so yeah, we can't applications. Promise. Yeah, reviewing the applications. Uh, no, you uh, you don't have to give an affidavit for gap years. Uh, you would have to explain them, however, if you had a gap year. That's a question that could come up in an interview. And yeah, I think Richa has answered the placement. It has ranged from 5 lakhs to 12 lakhs. So uh, that depends. Over to you, Sada. So I think we are towards the end. If we don't have any more questions, then I want to quickly recap. There are three steps. Uh, you have to register on this portal, upload the documents, and choose the PG program. Hope the Webinar has helped you make an informed decision, and then uh, you'll be asked to appear for the online personal interviews. And these are the timelines. So please don't wait till the last date uh, and don't be in the situation as this guy. Okay. Uh, so we really hope to see you all uh, and all the very best. Bindu, you, uh, Gunta, you have said, sir, you, do you want to say something in the chat? 
you can always unmute yourself. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Good morning, ma'am. Sorry, good evening, ma'am. Hello. Yeah, yes. good evening. Go yeah. ahead. Please. Okay. Um, ma'am, actually, I wanted to ask you that the the mail I have got get for a particular course, so I can only apply for that course, or other than uh, that, other courses. Other courses. Other courses. तो वो आपको हाँ जी आप जैसे मैंने कहा कि आप मेल कर सकते हैं हमने यहाँ पे हमारा ईमेल आईडी दिया है ct-program@clicksindia.org आप वहाँ पे हमसे बात कर सकते हैं मेल लिख सकते हैं कि आप अगर कोई और प्रोग्राम में इंटरेस्टेड हैं तो एजुकेशन संबंधित और जहाँ तक अभी तक जिस पोर्टल में है जिस प्रोग्राम के लिए आपने अभी के लिए अप्लिकेबल रहता है तो वंस वी हैव मोर क्लैरिटी हम उस पे आपको मेल कर देंगे तो आप उस तरह से आप हमें मेल कर दीजिए ठीक है एंड फॉर दोस हु हैव एनी अदर लैंग्वेज डिफिकल्टीज प्लीज डू नोट दैट यू आर वेलकम टू यू नो स्पीक इन अदर लैंग्वेजेस बट द एंटायर प्रोग्राम विल बी इन इंग्लिश बट वी डू हैव अ वेरी रोबस्ट एकेडमिक सपोर्ट हम मदद करते हैं कोशिश करते हैं कि वी कैन एनेबल यू टू बी पार्ट ऑफ आर प्रोग्राम्स ओके और भी सवाल आ रहे हैं सो यू आर ग्रेट या कैन आई कैन आई स्पीक या या प्लीज गो अहेड मैथ्यू जी आई एम फ्रॉम मणिपुर एक्चुअली आई हैव अप्लाइड फॉर सीवीटी uh and then my score is only 102 i think yeah. i answered that question it will really <laughs> depend uh i we can't say anything about that i have answered the question it will depend on the final list and so we any... from yeah and the, you know that like in any college there's list 1 there's list 2 there's list 3 uh we generally if you're asking in terms of it this has and it is on the site as well we do generally give a one seat is to 10 uh candidates ratio of uh, you know uh, interviews so we do allow yeah. for a large pool where, who come in for interviews but we can't yeah. tell you uh, right now because the shortlisting or finalization is not being done so is there any uh, quotas for saddle drive Yes. 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 I mean, just as any How government important? institute, this is a government institute, so all government regulations and government, uh, you know, quotas all apply. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Most welcome. Prachi scholarship, Gomati Meera, you want to take that up? That very much comes under the purview of financial aid itself. so that's already been responded to so as i again pointed out i reiterate that this completely is based on the review of applications and the economic status so income status and it's not available for all and uh, i think ranjan uh... रिचा ने आपके सवाल का जवाब दे दिया है कि ज्योग्राफी पॉलिटिकल साइंस इकोनॉमिक सोशियोलॉजी हिस्ट्री ये सब सोशल साइंसेस के अंदर आएंगी सॉरी बट प्राइमरीली यू डू इट एज सोशल साइंसेस एज अ कोर्स सो यू विल डू ऑल ऑफ देम नॉट जस्ट ज्योग्राफी गुड इवनिंग सुकांतो कैन आई आस्क माई क्वेश्चन प्लीज सुकांतो uh ma'am i applied for this uh, i applied for the three courses we have three courses that we can apply for three preferences so i prefer three of the courses but mm -hmm. after getting knowing uh, after uh, i just come to know that education elementary somewhat in uh, for primary section uh, for primary students and can i change this or i have to because i have applied for all these three programs Uh, my first again, question was yeah you can again uh, write money. yeah you can again okay. write so kantu uh, sorry you were saying something i'm so sorry to cut you off please go ahead uh, 
yes ma'am uh, i applied for three courses my first preference was uh, education and technology the second was master in education and third was in elementary but now i understood that there is a difference between each of the in education and education elementary so if i can if i can change that and i can apply for some other course is it possible so you can write in again as i said the processes are still being determined one second uh, depending on the uh, you know uh, your preference the way that it is determined is once you apply for a course and if you are selected uh, you uh, so if whatever your preference order is it is in that order that your uh, selection gets done so if you have applied for ma in education technology that's uh, automatically if you have made the list there then uh, you you would pay fees there or you would default and and then switch to your preference to so it it is basically in in order of your preference that your admissions will be prioritized at the institute level right and uh, you can definitely to change your third option be able to write in and ask if that is possible before the shortlisting is done sure uh one more. yeah sure and one more question is ma'am um, uh, is there uh, because education and technology is the uh, is the new program uh, mm -hmm. as compared to master in education so there is a little lots of difference between placement or there is uh, that we have placements in education and technology too <laughs> so that uh, i i will Uh, Richa Bindu, do you want to come in? Sorry, yeah. Ah, uh, while they are, yeah, yeah. Responding to a query. Yeah, yeah. No, no. So I can, yeah. So ah, uh, we we so again because ah, uh, largely a main education technology as Bindu pointed out is our newest course. Um, it's also blended. which means that what we are whom we are attracting as students are largely working professionals again and so we've not had to go out of our way to get them learning opportunities uh but again another point that comes in is one of the opportunities for work uh placements is your capstone project so if you're working in an area with a field that actually enables you to build your contacts and work with professionals and many of our um faculty members are also from working professional fields who are in the industry uh so you get those opportunities if you're asking have we had a placement run for our students no uh not for this first batch of ours yeah But, so i just wanted yeah. to mention that we've only had one batch that has completed the ma in education and technology yeah. it's a very new course but we definitely um based on our experience of this first batch we are definitely going to uh, work with the placement uh, process for the uh, upcoming batches okay. thanks okay. Uh, so, yeah. thank you thank you thank you and uh, yeah sorry yeah. go ahead bindu uh, gomti sorry no just richa has responded so to add to richa's response to ruchika uh yes uh, i totally agree with richa but only if you are doing an ma and if you don't have a ba then schools will not take you if you want to become a teacher then you have to do a ba even after an ma otherwise both the programs have their own potential benefits good evening ma'am yeah go ahead speak uh ma'am i'm pravrika from hyderabad uh huh uh ma'am i actually have registered for two subjects before right so after opening the mail again uh after opening the link sorry so it's showing that i can't register for the new course like which course did you want to register for Uh, ma'am, in education and technology, ma'am. So you have already opted two programs, and now you want to add third preference, is it? Third preference, is it? Yes, yes, ma'am. And you're not. I, able. I think Richard responded to your question, saying that wait for spot admissions. So, uh, Gomti, I think for for this, uh, she yeah. wanted to add the third preference. So, uh huh. 
can write to the uh, admissions email id which is there i think there. That yeah. anusha again i yeah. think yeah, responded yeah, to someone else that. yeah yeah so anyone who wants to add or change their preferences please write to that admissions portal people do read it they may not immediately get back but they read it and actions are taken this is the time to do it because june 10th the list will be out post that we won't be able to do much so please write in now yes ma'am thank you so for all such technical queries you have to write to uh, admissionsinfo@edu.it and you can also call to this number which is a dedicated help line yeah and you can keep us in cc if you want in the ct hyphen program at clicksindia.org you can keep us in cc but primarily the person's responsible is it's a centralized admission process this is for all students who want to you know look at varied programs across schools we are only anchoring the education for now so school of development studies is a different center the school itself in the mumbai campus yeah so those okay many questions uh, so good to hear right so is it a good time to say goodbye to today's session okay there is one more question uh shrinivasan is there any preference for ncc certificate holders please do check out the website lists what all uh, uh reservations are there it follows as uh, anusha said it follows the government policy of reservation so it allows all reservations which the government has mandated yeah and if you still have a question please write an email so that the response will also be uh, very precisely directed back yeah i think uh, any anybody else want to say oh by any chance will we meet ratan tata sir <laughs> well you could meet anywhere but uh, if you're saying to be organized that's no <laughs> but last time uh, i would say our annual day had baman irani as the chief guest so anyway you never know basically <laughs> yeah you never know <laughs> so on that note i think we uh end today's session so thank you very much everyone so Ma'am, one last question, please. Oh, okay. Yes, Krishna. Go ahead. Um, ma'am, after completing the MA in in education, uh, where will be uh, we uh, be placed in companies or uh, either in school? The answer is uh, at both the places, but depends on role. So, if you are to be placed. in the schools it will not be in the capacity of a teacher but say curriculum developer a researcher who works around curriculum designing shaping a textbook and so and so forth you know so there are various role apart from teaching in schools these days and ma education students are placed there uh, from our uh, batches in several schools and, and and also see, within schools you may be in progressive schools where you could become teachers but it could be policy it can be research it, there are many many options krishna and not just teaching or uh, and i uh, encourage you to look at our youtube playlist uh, just search uh, ct youtube uh, you will get uh, many many alumni and you will see amazing roles and amazing work that they are doing okay sir thank you Sir, one more question: The uh, sure. developing the curriculum, developing the syllabus, and all all these things are generally done by the NCERTs, not at the school levels. So, how can we contribute uh, in that manner in the school? Uh, curriculum development happens at all levels. We have uh, 
technology people. Uh, we have, um, um, you know, you have te technology institute. Bindu, you're muted. Sorry, just to add on when... to what Bindu was saying, uh, I'll just say that even schools which are private boards, mm. actually till first to eighth standard have a lot of flexibility and free way to design their own curriculum and choose their own textbooks and kind of cre curate learning experiences for yeah, their sorry students. Yeah, about that, but yeah. education technology uh... Also, uh, edu education technology firms do. Uh, I'm sorry, I think my internet is really poor. Can you hear me? I think I lost connection. Off, on, on and off, on and off. Now we are able to hear you. Yeah, Go ahead. I'm really sorry about that. Yeah, what I wanted to say was curriculum does it, uh, uh, development doesn't happen only in schools. Uh, it also happens in schools and it happens at a school level too. But otherwise, NGOs, um, ed tech companies, um, so many other places do curriculum development. Um, and uh, so they may use the NCRT curriculum and syllabus as a guideline, but uh, many people do curriculum development. Does that answer your question, Bindu? Was the yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank, thank you so much, ma'am. Actually, we're hey, glad to get all these questions, but <laughs> Sadaho. No, no, I'm happy to go on, but I think we had the indicated we'll have it for one hour, but very glad to get so many questions. As you can see, we are very accommodative. Definitely questions that you'd like to help you get the best of understanding. All right then, yeah. So all the best. If you have any further questions, please do write to us, reach out on the numbers and don't wait, apply soon. So have a good evening. Thank you.